right, everybody, and welcome to the Touch of Gaming podcast, episode number 115. As always, I'm your host, Lloyd Hennison, and joining me, Jared Schultz. Jared, how are you doing, my friend? Doing great. How are you doing, Lloyd? I'm doing good. I have to turn your mic up a little bit so I can actually hear you, but I'm doing really good. And uh, you're doing a lot better now that people will be able to hear you on the podcast. Yep, that's true. <laughs> so, uh, it's been a week. How have you been? Been playing lots of games? I've been playing a little bit less this week. Had a wedding going on and just um, didn't get quite as much time to play video games. You would have felt guilty bringing out your, your iPod Touch when uh, you uh, were uh, when you were uh, sitting there in the wedding. That would have been uh, I, not a good thing for you. I can't say the thought didn't cross my mind. <laughs> Uh, that's awesome. I, I would have loved to have seen that. Pictures of it. You getting thrown out from a, a wedding while actually still playing the game as you're being escorted out. That would be great. Hey, man. Puzzle Crash. It's addicting. <laughs> that's exactly right. They would have forgiven you for it. You just had to let them play it for a few minutes. They would have been like, all right. Yep. That, that's fine. We understand. We understand. Exactly. That, that's all the all this world needs is understanding right <laughs> yes exactly all right well let's uh, let's do this let's get into the show um first off jared what haven't you been playing or what have you been playing in the little bit of time that you've been playing the stuff that you've been playing all right well um so i've been playing tavern quest so tavern quest is a complete freemium game by glue mobile and it is driving me bonkers. So you basically you play this like dragon dude. And for some reason, this dragon, he's not a big scary dragon, but he's a dragon that likes to cook for people. And so he opens a tavern. Um, what a nice, yeah. what a nice fellow. Yeah. So you get to play this dragon and it's pretty similar to every other freemium game that has this type of mechanics. You go and you cook stuff, and then you take it off, and then people come and eat your stuff and pay you money for it. Um, and then you wait time, and you can speed things up by buying premium currency. Uh, there's a couple of annoying things about it where you know how sometimes like things will go bad if you don't log in enough? Yeah, that seems to happen really fast on this game. Like If you don't log in with like an hour of it being done, and I'm probably exaggerating here some, but if you don't log in pretty quick after the, the recipe is done, uh, uh, it just is completely ruined, and you either can waste all the time you've got or use premium currency to make it all better. Uh, um, and then along with that, you get to hire heroes in your tavern, and they get to stay in your inn, and you can go battle guys with them. But the battle is just kind of boring because, like, you put out your three little guys and sometimes you tap stuff flying at them and it's, I, I don't know, it's just not that great. And then, so, I, I have a few things that I really drive me crazy about any iOS game. And, um, you know, maybe I, we should just come up with, or I should just write my list of pet peeves and <laughs> if any game has these, then I'm not even going to bother. Well, this one... Uh, violates the way too many push notifications. So I go to bed and, you know, it's making noise or whatever. And I wake up and I have 12 push notifications. Jeez. Oh, that is way too many. That's egregious. That's terrible. Yeah. So I'll, I'm fine if you give me one, you know, trying to get me back into your game. And then the other thing is, every single time you load it, it takes like a minute and a half to load because it goes and gets everything from the the server and all that stuff, and it's just annoying. You minute and a half to load, and then the first thing that you get every single time is two ads, one for another game and one telling you that if you join their network, you can get free premium currency. So, so they're actually uh, push notifying you with ads about other games? No, no, no. The oh. the. Pu- once you log in, oh, that's what is, in. every single time you log in, you end up with these two ads every single time. Okay. Uh, one telling you, I think it's Tap Joy or something like that. Right. And then, you know, and every three or fourth time, they'll say, hey, do you want to rate our game? And I'm like, no, not really. <laughs> so it's just, it's, it's horrible. And I don't understand why people are rating it like they are. I guess if you really like Farmville or if you're really lonely and would like more 
push notifications, <laughs> this would be a fantastic game for you. You could pretend they're people that want to talk to you, I guess. Yeah. That's what it is. Yeah, that would be perfect. And then you could, you know, get tons of push notifications and, you know, you could be like, hey, look, I'm popular because look at how many push notifications I get. <laughs> or if you want to get out of a meeting, you could just open the game and then close it and wait for the push notification to come. And it's like, oh, my wife's having the baby. I got to go. And then storm out of the meeting. That's actually not a bad thought. <laughs> Good stuff. So, yeah, just be prepared for a flurry of push notifications. I'm fine with, you know, one, maybe even two if I haven't played your game for a day or two. But, yeah, when I go to sleep and wake up and there are 12, that's too many. So, yes, that one will be getting deleted and I will never be reviewing it because I just couldn't stand it. And the reason I was playing it is because I've kind of been looking for a new freemium game because... Uh, I I finally gave up Dragon Veil. I know what. But, I know, but but you the the game was made for you. They they came out with the Jared Schultz update just for you. Yes, well I finally gave it up. So if you have been giving me Dragon Veil gems and I haven't been giving back, that's why I'm really sorry. I just got bored by the game what, because what's I was going to happen to all your dragons? They're they're sad, Jared. They're they're hungry and and dying. You you have to go love them. No, don't make me go install it again. Because <laughs> cool. I think that one has cloud saves, so I think I'd, if I go back, I'd have them all again. But anyway, yeah, so I, I'm kind of looking for a new freemium game, trying to figure out what I'm going to play, because uh, there's a hole in my heart where Dragonville was. <laughs> nice. I was actually thinking about it, and I played it almost continually for nearly a year. And granted, lately, I, I wasn't logging in that often, you know, once every three days or so. But anyway... Um, yeah, it had a good run, really impressive run. So I'm done with it. And then I've been playing Legend Four some more, which was that game I kind of talked a little bit about list last week. Still, really goofy currency system. You get way more by logging in every day. Like, um, you get 1,500 souls for 99 cents, but if you log in five days in a row on your fifth day, you start getting 3,000 every day. So you get the equivalent of you know, $2 purchase every single day. Nice. nice. <laughs> so I guess that one, they just really want you to keep playing every day. Um, and then if you get stuck, you just don't, you, you log in every day and, and bank the souls for a few days and then you can beat the stuff. I don't know. I, it's fine. It's, it's a fun little game and I've been enjoying it. And then I've been playing a little bit of a uh, horn and have to be careful how I say that. But, um, yeah, so you talked a little bit about this one last week, and I agree with your Zelda meets Infinity Blade. Um, uh, so, yeah, it's, it's pretty good, and I've enjoyed it. Um, but you're going to be reviewing that later, so I'm not going to talk too, too much about it. So, uh, yeah, that's what I've been playing. Nice. What have you been playing, Lloyd? Um, I've been playing actually a fair bit, um, a, a fair bit of a few games, um, not not a whole pile of games. Uh, it's actually kind of nice that this is sort of a week week for a week week uh, of uh, game releases because there's not too much new coming in that's really uh, making me super excited. Um, so mainly I've been playing Puzzle Craft. Um, both myself and Kara were, were addicted to it. We played all the time. It's the game that every two hours I see, oh, taxes are ready. I, I should go in and, and, and get my taxes. And so I go in and do that. Um, just really, really, really ad addicted to that game. Um, I've also been playing Horn. Um, I, I'm not completely finished with Horn. I have like, I think about another half hour of the game to play. Play, um, from what I've heard from other people so um, and the, the reason why I'm not complete uh, on horn is because puzzle craft has been sucking up all my time so I, I apologize to you people that have been waiting for my full horn review um, I'm I'm fully ready to review the game even though it's not fully 100% complete uh, just because I had such a great time with it and I've also been playing uh, Jack Lumber as kind of the other game to kind of fill the the, the few voids between other games um, so that's the the really awesome um, kind of Fruit Ninja esque uh, game where you're a, a lumberjack and you're cutting logs. If you don't own this game, you definitely need to pick it up. Um, I'm going to be reviewing it next week just because I had uh, I had some other reviews to do for this week, so um, I, I will definitely be reviewing that one uh, coming up soon. So uh, check that one out uh, when I do review it. And that's about it. Uh, it's been like I said. 
not not a whole pile of games, but I've been doing them uh, a fair bit, playing them a fair bit. So um, that's always good when you can kind of go back to some older stuff that you have on your iOS devices. Yeah, definitely. Nice. All right. Well, um, what do you say we get into the rest of the show? Uh, we'll kick it off with notable releases, um, which mainly is going to be notable updates because there's been a, a whole pile of, of really great updates, um, which is perfect because this week is actually um, really light for the amount of like actual new games coming out. So uh, the first one is Angry Birds Space got a huge update and it's a Mars Curiosity rover update. So there's a new uh, level that you can go to or a new world that you can go to that has 20 levels and you are trying to kill the pigs that have stolen the Mars rover. Um, there's a new pig that uh, is in there as well, the astronaut pig um, and there's some other great stuff as well. So if you're not done with Angry Birds Birds, you might want to check this one out. Um, it's a free update, obviously, and or not obviously. I guess they have been charging for some updates, but yeah, um, Mars Curiosity rover. That's pretty darn cool. So uh, definitely check that one out. Uh, Cut the rope also got an update, and it added another box. It's called the Spooky Box, so you can go in there and play through a whole bunch of levels. And um, there's apparently a feature called Superpowers. I haven't played it yet, um, but if you beat all the levels, um, you, you can unlock superpowers is what it looks like to me. So uh, if you're not done with Cut the Rope and you want to you wanna feed some more candies to a really cute dinosaur, uh, you might want to check that update out. Uh, Doodle Jump. I was, I was worried that the superpowers are going to break it. So I'm really worried that, you know, kind of like they did with Angry Birds. Yeah, yeah. So I, I, don't think I have these to see are, what it does. Yeah, I don't think these are IAP um, superpowers. So maybe that's a little bit different than... Uh, what Angry Birds did where it's like, hey, buy a, buy a win me and beat this level with three stars button for 99 cents. And you do it and there you go. You get three stars. Um, I, 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 I hope not. Yeah, exactly. Uh, I'll have to give it a go because I, I did enjoy Cut the Rope when it uh, first came out. Uh, Doodle Jump also got an update, which is kind of strange because, I mean, that game has been out forever. I mean, that was like one of the first real big games, one of the first big hits on the iOS App Store. Uh, so that came up with what they're calling their biggest update yet. Yet. there's a ninja theme that you can play with uh, so you, you're playing as a ninja doodle sure um, and there's a whole bunch of ninja objects to help you get up faster and uh, quicker than ever before um, my kids are huge doodle jump fans they love the game so I'm gonna have to update doodle jump on my phone and, and let them play through it and we'll see if they get the Lloyd's kids seal of approval for next episode um, Minecraft Pocket Edition also got a big update as well. This one actually added in the Creepers, which haven't actually been in any of the Minecraft Pocket updates so far. Um, so you'll have to check that one out if you're into super scary exploding green things uh, that destroy all the hard work that you do. Uh, some other stuff they put in is boxes, chests, uh, stackable uh, food for the first time. So it's getting really close to what real Minecraft is on the PC. Obviously, you can't go in to any of those worlds and connect to servers and things so it still has a way to go um, but it's it's actually it's it's as good as um, the version of Minecraft that I really got sucked into when I first started playing it after like the first alphas and it really started getting in uh, good uh, that's when I really got sucked in so I'm gonna have to uh, start playing this a little bit more on my iPad and see if I get sucked in uh, to this one as well um, a big update uh, to Catan came out uh, you know a little bit about this one Jared why don't you tell us about the the Catan update yeah, so Settlers of Catan is a great game. It's a board game that they have done a very good job with making an iOS version. And a while back ago, they made and they made it so Seafarers, the expansion for, to, for the board game, was purchable, purchasable as in-app purchase. Um, and the other cool thing is that uh, now, with the new update, you can do um, Knights and Cities as an in-app purchase. So that's two of the major ones that they now have as uh, in-app purchases. Um, and, and they're really reasonably priced. Um, I'm pulling it up right now. Um, but they also give you a sample of it. They usually, they'll give you one map so that you can play one map with, uh, with the expansion. Um, yeah, and then the other thing is it looks like they've, they've slowly been installing new tile sets. So... Looks like it's currently four ninety nine for cities and nights, and so if you want to go and you can try it out 
in the app already. So that's kind of cool because you don't have to download a new app. Hmm. A- and then if you decide you like it, it's uh, four ninety nine, which you know it's either that or pay thirty dollars for a new game, right? Yeah, exactly. Uh, might as well uh, might as well do that. That's pretty cool. Um, and the funny thing about this is uh, when you're buying the actual Catan tile sets, like you're spending like forty dollars of real money to buy the physical little tile sets and expansion packs and things and. And, and you can have the same amount of fun playing on your iPad for like $5 for the updates. Um, I, I think iOS is really going to change the way change board the games are, uh, are are really put out there. So, yeah, it's kind of cool. Kind of cool, kind of cool. All right, moving on. The last big update uh, is it's actually a really big one. Um, Order and Chaos, that's uh, Game Loft's World of Warcraft clone. Uh, it's been out for a long time now. Um, we played it. Um, well, I played it a lot when it first came out. I know you played a little bit, Jared. We tried getting a guild together and all that stuff, but it just didn't uh, it didn't pan out because of all the bugs and crazy stuff that they had. Um, they've actually made the game free, so it's free. It's uh, you have to buy the app, but there is no subscription anymore with this latest update, which is pretty huge. Because uh, I mean, the, the the subscription was really cheap. It was three dollars for I think six months. Um, it was 99 cents a month, so it was actually a really good value if you if you were like a Warcraft player, since Warcraft was like, I mean, it's like $15 a month, um, so it was actually a really good deal, but um, yeah, they made it so it's free um, to play once you buy the app, which is pretty cool, and the latest update actually adds a whole bunch of things. There's a PvP arena now, so if you want to get into PvP fighting, uh, there's a whole arena system. Uh, there's mounts now, so you can ride horses and other things. Uh, there's some new dungeons, new quests, uh, new high-level items. Um, apparently, there's something called a teleport 30-day pass, so I guess there's uh, something that you can buy. Um, so there's still in-app purchases in this game, so maybe you can buy the ability to teleport to all the different cities um, without having to uh, find the pass there and things like that so um they're they're changing it a lot um they're they're making it so um you can pretty much play it for free um and i and from what i understand this is across all the different versions so if you play like the facebook version or the pc version um like the mac version um or the ios version or the android version uh, as far as i can tell everything is um subscription free which is uh, pretty darn cool yeah, I was wondering if those teleports, like if it if it's going to be impossible to play now without teleports, because I was wondering if it's those teleports that you use to get around the game a lot, because if it's those that you no longer can use those without a subscription, I can see how mm-hmm. um, you can play it for free, but it, it you may end up bored running around for a bit you yeah. know, in between locations. Yeah, exactly. Or maybe you buy an in-app purchase um, every every month or or every six months or whatever it is and uh, you get unlimited teleports wherever without having to buy the item so maybe it just becomes a, a different menu that you access or something um, I'm going to definitely dig into it I'm going to I uninstalled Order and Chaos from my iPad just because I was running out of space I'm definitely going to put it back in to check it out um, just a little while ago they gave us everybody that ever had an account 60 days free um, so that was kind of cool now they're just basically removing subscriptions for everybody so uh, check it out and if you're playing it uh send us a message let us know what servers you're playing on maybe i'll come create a character on your server um instead of the one that i was on which i can't even remember this old horn silver something or other i can't remember what it was called um something valley maybe i don't know but um it's been a while so i'm, I'm definitely happy to jump into a new server and uh, start playing with that so uh, yeah, check it out, Order and Chaos. Um, but that's not it for apps. We got some actual real apps releasing, some games coming out, not just updates. The first one is called Vote. Uh, it's Vote with three ex- exclamation marks. And if you will believe it, this is a game from Chair, the creators of Infinity Blade and Infinity, and Infin- Infinity Blade 2. They've come up with a game called Vote, where you basically take on uh, the role of either Obama or who's the other one? Romney or whatever. I'm not I'm not American, so I don't really care about this stuff. Yes, Romney. <laughs> I'm kidding. I knew it was Romney. Um, but you can basically have battles between the two of them. Yeah, so you can have kind of strange uh, mix up. Uh, sorry, what was that? Oh, I think uh, I think we lost Jared's audio a little bit there. Um, so yeah, you you basically play as one or the other. You dress them up and you battle it out. 
and uh, the game tracks the amount of wins, who's choosing what, if Obama's more popular than than Romney, uh, or uh, and, and the winners and all that type of stuff. And then once you get to um, w- once you once you win, uh, it takes you to a page where you can um, link to the uh, Rock the Vote page. So it's basically just a, a an app that's trying to get people to come in and uh, and, and make people vote, which is pretty cool. Um, I, I definitely think that younger people should definitely be involved with the uh, political process and uh, voting in people. So if, if a game like this does it, um, that's pretty awesome as well. So uh, yeah, check it out. Uh, vote. And then there's one other game. Jared, are you are you there? Did we get you back? Yeah, you got me back. Okay. One Epic Night. What, what is that all about? So One Epic Night is uh, by the same people that did uh oh what was it tiny heroes so it was that tower defense game where there's the heroes coming and you set all these nasty traps for them and there's a ton of traps in it that you get to play well one epic knight is by simultronics the same people that did that and so this time you actually get to play a knight that is attacking the castle and it is so much a temple run cologne however i was actually really enjoying it because it did have some fresh things in it um So, yeah, I'll be playing that one a little bit more. Uh, I've only played through it three or four times. But, uh, yeah, so if you're interested, it is free. So Cool. So uh, check that one out. All right, moving on. Let's get into the news. Uh, The first one is actually kind of a a big news item. Uh, Gameloft was known as the game company. uh, Well, they're known as a game company that rips off other games, of course. That is what they're most known for. But they were also known early on in the iOS um, landscape as the company that would bring out a $7 app. And then a week later, they would drop it to 99 cents. Um, Nova 3 came out a while ago. And for, for whatever reason, it hasn't really gone on sale um which is interesting so um starting today like actually just minutes before uh the uh the podcast started um it it went on sale for 99 cents so if you haven't picked up nova 3 you might want to do that right now while it's on sale for a buck uh because it is a really awesome game as far as first person shooters go yeah and in terms of sale another game of mine that was one of my favorites uh, hopefully this will get out soon is uh, Rune Raiders and it just went free as well so if you didn't pick that up when I talked about it and reviewed it and loved it um, you should go pick that up now for free yeah definitely I, I picked it up uh, because Jared shamed me into doing it and it's actually really cool so I, I'm quite happy with that yeah it's a little bit different so um, another thing so Final Fantasy Legends is coming out um, we knew it was coming out and we had heard August, but now it's confirmed that it's coming out in August. Uh, it looks like uh, it's going to be next week, in fact, obviously, since August is nearly over. Um, but strangely enough, it's not releasing on a Thursday, as most games do. It's releasing on a Friday. Leave that to Square Enix. Um, and Square Enix will likely be charging, you know, at least 10 bucks for it. However, this is... Uh, basically, it, it, it goes back and it's kind of, let's see, well, it was released before, right, as Final Fantasy Legends, mm-hmm. um, and it was only on Japanese cell phones. And now it's been reworked and put together and no longer is it episodic, and it's uh, it's coming out as Final Fantasy Dimensions next week. Um, so, yeah, if you're interested in kind of an old 16-bit with a job system type game should be out next week um final fantasy dimensions i don't know if i'll be picking it up really depends on uh, how expensive square decides to make it yeah exactly it looks really good i mean well it looks 16 bits so of course it looks really good to me i love that style but uh we'll see how it plays um obviously it was something that we couldn't get here since it came out in japan and but it was something i was always jealous about i'd I'd read like my my copy of game pro or whatever magazine was covering it and it's like oh damn all i have is like nibbles on on my phone and they get to play final fantasy that's no fair um it's pretty cool I'm, i'm really uh hoping that i can uh pick this one up and and play through it but it all depends on price and it also all depends on on really what what it's rates as because uh, i'm not really sure what it's going to be all right moving on uh some good news uh for sequels plants vs zombies 2 has been announced and it's coming out in 2013 spring of 2013 um so it was announced just before popcap announced that they laid off a bunch of people so 
Yikes. Um, I, I, I don't know if they're related or whatever, but uh, the game's coming out. So, uh, yeah, check it out. Uh, it's going to be coming out in uh, f- in spring. Uh, I can't wait. And it's one that we definitely will both be playing here on uh, on uh, the podcast. Sure. And just to know, in spring, we don't know if that'll be out for iOS yet or what platform it's coming to first. Um, but it will be out in spring, and then I'm sure that at some point iOS version will follow, or that will be the iOS version. It's just kind of, we don't know that yet. Exactly. Cool. So moving on. Yep. So Rodeo Games, one of one of our favorite developers here, partially because they took the time out to talk to us and have an interview with us. Um, they're the ones that made that Hunters 2 game, and it was really great. Well, We've kind of been waiting to hear what they're working on next, and they had kind of teased that it was a really big IP. Well, they finally announced what they're working on, and it is, in fact, a huge IP. Um, Their new project is Warhammer Quest. Um, Did you ever play Warhammer? I I did a little bit. I never did. But it's a huge IP, and it's really cool um, that they are being pulled in on such a huge IP project as, you know, a small independent studio and... And uh, they actually are getting to reuse the same engine that they developed for Hunters 2. And there's a trailer. I have to say you don't get much from the trailer right now. So it's probably not worth your time to go watch it. But uh, hopefully it looks like early next year we should be able to see what they're working on and and have a new um, rodeo games um, game that we can play. So that's great. Cool. I can't wait for this one. It looks uh, looks really good. Well, with as little as uh, they've actually shown of it, it looks pretty cool. All right, last but not least, uh, remember that really awesome uh, controller that I uh, talked about last episode, the Coco controller? Yes, I do. I was so excited for it. Remember how awesome it was and it was going to come out and it's going to be great and I can't wait. Um, literally minutes after I hit stop record on the show, it was canceled. <laughs> Jared was actually hanging out in the chat room because I was recording an episode of the bonus stage right after and uh, yeah I, we both got an email within minutes of each other saying yep it's been cancelled so wah, too bad so sad you won't be getting this thing out really really upset me um, I, that's two really awesome controllers that both died uh, the projects died cancelled by the manufacturers um, at these pretty much just before they they finished because they didn't think they'd get funding. So um, I guess that's the the bad side of Kickstarter, that there's always these possibilities that will happen. So uh, no Coca controller right now, but maybe in the future they'll come out with it and it'll actually uh, it'll actually come out maybe. Yeah, they said they got good feedback and that they might come back uh, once they've polish some stuff up some more and we'll see what happens i think part of it was they didn't want to have bad publicity from a failed kickstarter so yeah you know they canceled it after only mm-hmm. it was only out like what a week or so it, it wasn't very long no. that it was out and uh they canceled it and it was sad exactly cool all right well what do you say we get into the reviews sir okay all right well let's get into puzzle craft Uh, We'll do that one first. We're doing a joint review of this one because we both played it and we both uh, really love it. Spoilers, we both really love it. So uh, Puzzle Craft is uh, is a game that's a dollar. And uh, the game is a cross between an RPG. um, That's the, I guess, the craft version, uh, the, the craft word in the name. And a match three puzzle game, which is the puzzle uh, version of it. And you basically are playing match three puzzle games to collect items to build stuff in your city. Your city just starts as a settlement. It's just you and a couple dudes. Uh, and then you use your items to bu- to build different things. You build houses. You build um, crop places. You, you build barns. You build scarecrows and all this stuff. And the more that you play, the more items you get, which means that the more items that you can, or the new, the more buildings that you can build, you level up with experience, you get gold. Um, and it's just, it's like this little mini RPG wrapped up in a match three puzzle game. And it, it didn't take more than like five minutes playing this game to have me hopelessly addicted. It, it was, um, it, it really suck. It's stunk. It's, uh, stuck its nails into me really deep and uh i couldn't stop playing it i know jared's playing it right now he just picked up his phone so you you were just doing a move there weren't you jared oh jared are you there did we lose you again? no i i had to go clean out all my items oh okay that's what it was i'm here <laughs> sorry you you keep uh you keep breaking i'm up. here 
no, we're we're having Skype delay again. Oh, yeah, two I'm weeks in sure. a row. Two weeks in a row. That's no good. Um, so I'll continue on with puzzle craft. So um, basically, as you're building items, um, or as you're as you're collecting items through Match Three Puzzle Game, uh, you, you basically learn to get bit more and more um, things that are similar to it. So you're clearing out wheat. Eventually, once you clear out eight wheat or nine wheat uh, or ten wheat, depending on how far you've progressed, you'll start making carrots um, and and based on levels as well. And and then you'll you'll then upgrade your carrots, and the more carrots you 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 collect, you get another item. And it, and it's it's a game that just keeps building and building and building and building and building um, on top of it on top of itself, which is really amazing. It, it just it, it turned out to be so addictive and so much fun. Um, and 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 you're you're building you're getting these items through your crops through through the so you, so the crops are uh, wheat and grass and trees and other items like that. But then once you get far enough, you actually unlock a mine, and then you're using the food that you get from collecting wheat. So you collect a bunch of wheat, and it turns into bread, and then you use that. Um, you use that food to then fund or, or basically give you the ability to then go into the mine and start digging in the mine. And the mine is used to get things like iron and steel. And then you upgrade the iron and steel to get silver and coal. And then you upgrade it to get uh, gold and, and, and other stuff like that, diamonds. And I mean, the game just keeps building and building and building and building. Um, I, I got to level 25. I finished everything in the game. And I'm still playing it, or I was still playing it. So yeah, uh, we'll we'll get into that in a second. So uh, are you there? Uh, are, are you there, Jared? Yeah, I'm here. Okay, you're back. Cool. Sorry, we just had to reboot his video, so now we're we're back. So that's good. Yeah, I I don't really have a lot to add. You really did a good job. At, um, the one thing is that lots of times you can also get tools, and the tools will allow you to do even better. And you didn't kind of talk about that, but then some of your buildings will produce free tools every couple of hours that you can then go and use to do even better at mining or at farming. And that's the main thing that you do. And it's, it's really fun. Yeah, exactly. And the tools are, are just kind of shortcuts. So, or there are ways to, um, to, to help you so you might have um, w when you get a little bit further in the game and uh, and and you get part part way into your harvest you might actually get um, you might get some mice that jump into your into your grass so they will actually jump from one um, one part one wheat to another wheat and and kind of screw up the way that you're making matches um, so you get a tool that is a cat and will scare away all the mice um, then you can also get tools like um, things to basically harvest all the wheat at one time or cut down all the trees at one time. So they're, they're really time savers, but they also help you to get out of jams or they're a good thing to use right before um, the the harvest day is going to end or before you run out of food when you're going through through the mine. So they, they work really well. Um, so how, how far did you get in the game, Jared? I am currently level 21. You're level 21. So you're almost at the end. Um, basically, how the game ends is you, you get to level, you get to about level 25, and you place a castle, provided you've placed everything else. And the castle's really expensive. You need 25 gold bars, you need 25 diamonds, you need 25 cow, collections of cows, whatever they're called, herd of cows, and 25 something else. I can't remember if it's apple pie or whatever. Um, and then you place this this castle, and then everybody that ever talked to you in the game pops up on the screen, and it's really great. Um, so I did that, and I was, I was super happy. And I wanted to keep playing the game, uh, keep buying more villagers and stuff like that. And then I stopped playing the game yesterday evening. And I, I put my iPad down and I was happy. I was content that I I actually I beat the game and, and, and everything was great. And then I basically get to um, I, I get to my iPad this morning and I open the game and wouldn't you know it? It doesn't have my city name anymore where it's where it says continue. There's like it's just a blank area. So I'm like, that's really weird. Maybe something screwed up with it. So I stop the game and I go back into it and it's the same thing. And I'm like, oh, that's really weird. I'll just click continue. So I click continue and my 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 save game is gone. My my world is gone. Everything I've done is gone. It basically the only thing that happens is one of the little guys that talks and has the speech bubbles coming out the side of the screen, it just says null message. Null message. 
null message and I'm like you gotta be kidding me I probably put like 15 hours into this game like it, it it's just such a time sink that I was playing it like crazy ever since I got it and now my save game is gone and I'm I, I tweeted to the developers and I'm I'm really really hoping that they heard me <laughs> and they're going to have a fix uh, because I heard of another problem that they have apparently if you use an in-app purchase to get um, if you buy gold or whatever through in-app purchase apparently it doesn't work for a bunch of people um, for whatever reason it crashes before you get your your funds so you spend the money but you don't get the gold so it looks like the developers have a couple bugs with this game um, which is unfortunate because otherwise this game is 100% awesome I love it and I, I can't wait to keep playing it once I get my city back, if I can get my city back. Wow, that's really, really bad. Yeah, it's if I would have known that there was a potential game ending bug like this, I, I wouldn't have played the game <laughs> after I got to a certain point. I would have waited for a patch. Um, so, yeah, I'm really kind of disappointed at that. But still, I love the game. So I'm still I can't help but give it good marks um, with the caveat that your game might just corrupt itself for whatever reason. And I really hope that the developers will have a fix coming in, in the near future. Yeah, that's really, really bad. It makes me kind of want to like pause because I was actually just looking at reviews after you said that, and it looks like it doesn't just happen at the end there. Because otherwise I would just hold off and, you know, not build the castle. But, um, yeah, so yeah. I don't know what to do. Yeah, not uh, not super happy about that. But, hey, what are you going to do? Uh, that's what happens sometimes with games. Hopefully, a patch will come out that will uncorrupt the save game. Um, that's my hope. Otherwise, I don't know if I can stomach going through and playing through the whole game again. Although, I probably will because it was so much fun. Yeah, it's it's a really great game. But that's a, that's a really bad... Or both of those bugs are really bad. Um, yeah. One, because it allows them... Makes it so they can't get any extra <laughs> funds from people who are trying to speed things up with... with uh, in-app purchases and then two because uh yeah people that play it a lot like you and i and suddenly lose everything that's terrible yeah so. exactly um us oz girl in the chat room is asking if it has icloud support i don't believe it does because i started on my phone and then moved to my ipad and it didn't copy over my my progress so i'm thinking it doesn't um so yeah i don't know what happened there uh hopefully i'll hear from the developer in the near future and uh, they'll uh, they'll be able to let us know what the heck happened um, it's kind of disappointing, though. So, Puzzlecraft, what what do you give it, Jared? Um, I haven't experienced the game breaking bug, so I'm going to give it a five out of five. Yeah, five out of five. You know what? Even though I've experienced the game breaking bug, I still kind of have to give it a five out of five based on how much I enjoyed the game. Uh, four out of five, maybe. Um, I I I don't want to penalize this game because it's so good. I, I I'm holding holding out hope that yes, um, the the developers will come up with a solution that will fix this. I'm hoping anyway. Uh, otherwise, yikes, that's gonna really really suck. <laughs> so anyway, uh, Puzzlecraft gets a five out of five average since it is a joint review from the both of us. So check it out. And but there's a caveat there that there is a uh, potentially um, a game breaking bug, and hopefully that will be patched in the near future. Yeah, it's really, really good. I mean, and if you look at 99 cents, like <clears throat> if I got that much value out of every 99 cents I spent, I would be a very happy man. So, yeah, exactly. Cool. All right. Well, moving on. Uh, I guess I should take the next review since you're only doing one in this episode. Um, I'm going to talk about Horn first. So Horn is a, a game um, that uh, is being published by Zynga, which has scared a lot of people away that I've talked to, actually, which is really kind of funny um but anyway it's seven dollars on the app store and it's a game that's using the unreal engine and they put out some teaser trailers and um and from from the first look at this game it, it really kind of just grabbed me and i knew i wanted to play it so the game itself is a third person action rpg game um with aspects of infinity blade because you're attacking big beasts and you're attacking them with swipes you swipe on the screen um and, and then there's dodge buttons to kind of move around them and get to better attack uh, areas. And it's a mixture also of Zelda. There's some puzzle solving. You have to figure out ways to go to um, to areas to, uh, to, to figure out um, 
like how, how to get into this room. So you have to figure out that maybe if I pull the switch, this door will open, I can go in there. Um, so it, it has aspects of a lot of games that I, I really kind of dig, which is which is really cool. Um, and so I knew that I was going to like the game. Usually when I know I'm going to really like a game, I get really scared that it's not going to live up to it. But I got to say with Horn, from when I first started playing it to the end of of, of playing it, I... I, I'm enjoying it. I'm enjoying it 100%. Um, as I said earlier in the show, I have about a half hour, maybe an hour left to go in the game. I've probably been playing it for about 10 hours. It, it's a long game. Um, if you do everything, if you upgrade your weapons, there's a lot of gameplay in it for $7. And the story basically revolves around you being Horn. You wake up in this world that is run by like these golems that are running around, these, these uh, stone and mechanical beasts uh, that have taken over the world. You don't know where you are you know that you're in the city that you grew up in but it's all in in ruins and you basically find out that um you have this horn um which is kind of funny because your name is horn and you have a horn and you can use this horn to do different powers you are different magical things by learning the songs so when you learn the songs, you can destroy things. Uh, eventually, as you get through the game, you can make things whole again, or you can uh, do some other stuff. I don't want to spoil too much when I do this. And uh, you find out that through one of the, one of the creatures that you uh, break, um, destroy, you find out that it's actually your grandma. And uh, she's like, where, where have you been? And and where are we? And, and you lead her back to town. And then uh, you basically find out through fighting another golem and taking his head and putting it on your belt, which is a kind of awesome and it has this like really great humor that kind of just um, goes in the background um, that uh, the world was was made whole again by these beasts uh, because they got rid of all the, the, the squishy orange pink things or, or the squishy pinkies is what he called people or, or it was squishy or, or whatever squidgy something like that and um, and and you find out that the whole world has been turned into these these creatures. Um, actually, when you defeat any of the creatures, little animals will fly out. So you 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 destroy a flying thing and a bird flies away. You destroy a bigger one and and it might be a, a deer that will come running by, which is uh, which is kind of cool. Anyway. Um, so that's kind of the story of the game. And so, and, and the game itself is divided into a bunch of different worlds, uh, a bunch of different missions. And, and basically the, you jump into a mission and you go through, you kill a bunch of these things leading up to the end boss battle where you get one of these seeds and you need six of them to open a door. You're shown the door, but you can't get by it because there's a magical barrier. But once you get six of these things, it opens the door and then you get onto kind of what is the next half of the game and where things get even bigger. You're fighting big behemoths. You're you're fighting um, some crazy creatures, and there's some 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 great stuff that comes after it. Um, so the the game just it kind of sucked me in. Uh, the story was awesome, and I just really fell in love with it. Uh, as I said, it's uh, in last week when I did the show. It has a bit of fable in it where it's kind of like um, it's voiced by like British actors. It sounds like, and um, the world it looks very it looks very European. And I don't know from start to finish, it, it was such an awesome awesome game. So uh, you definitely have to check it out. I don't want to spoil too much else about the game. I don't want to talk too much about the story or what happens. But um, I gotta say you find out some things that uh, you find out what's responsible for turning the world the way it is and you figure out why what has to be done to correct it and uh, great game uh, $7.99 or $6.99 rather $7 you're going to get about 10 hours of play on this and it kind of sets a bar for beautiful looking games on the iOS platform um I can remember games on the PlayStation 2 and even into like the current console generation that didn't look as good as this. Um, so yeah, uh, definitely check it out if you're into action adventure RPGs. Um, it gets a 5 out of 5 by me. Um, I, I don't see any faults with this game. Other than the odd time, the controls are kind of weird. You have this little hookshot thing from like Zelda where you, you shoot this thing under your wrist and it, and it connects you to an object and then pulls you up. Um, you also use it as to fire arrows. So as you fire arrows... Uh, sometimes the enemies just you're, you're missing them even though you can see the little arrow flying towards them so there's some stuff like that but and, and some graphical glitches and things like that but I mean all in all uh, the game from top to bottom is really awesome so uh, if you're into these types of games action adventure RPGs you, you have to own horn it's probably the best one that is on the iOS app store it's one that has sucked me in and and uh, forced me to play it for about 10 hours um, and uh, I loved every minute of it so check it out horn 699 on the app store it gets a five out of five from me 
Yeah, I started picked it up. I uh, I usually have to fight for my iPad time, and it it looks like I I just want to mention a couple of quick things here. Um, look at the the limitations on it because right, even though right. they didn't cover that, yeah, they they specifically say in the description what it will run on, and a lot of people aren't reading that, and then they're giving it a low rating because it's not not uh, running well. Um, I know that on the iPod Touch it will run up until basically when you forge your first sword. And then it just starts crashing like crazy, which is really bad because it gives you just enough that people would really be like, oh, I'm really enjoying this. And then it just quits working. Um, so this is iPad 2 or the new iPad or iPhone 4S. So just keep that in mind. Um, most people are saying that it is working on an iPhone 4, but it, it is having some issues there. So uh, it is not for iPod Touch which means that I have to go get the iPad from my wife. And so I've only played it a small amount, but I've been really impressed with what I've seen. Cool. Awesome. So why don't you take over with your next uh, review? Okay. So my next review is Cafeteria Neponica. So this is the latest in the simulations that are by Kairosoft. This one has you taking over a cafe, hence cafeteria. And... Um, there's a lot of interesting things in it, but, um, there's also some, some things that are kind of annoying about it. So, um, you start off with a small diner in a small town and then as things go on, you, every couple of months, you send your guys on foraging expeditions and they go and get new ingredients. So you're managing basically two sets of guys. You have your one set of guys that are your cooks and then your other set of guys that, that run the floor. Um, and then just like some of the other ones, once they get up to a top level, like level five French chef and they're maxed out, then you can change them into another job. And then, you know, they, they continue to grow in that new job and you pay them more. Um, and basically you just run a cafe and you have the opportunity eventually to, um, build a second cafe in another city, which is bigger. You can also move your cafe into a bigger city, um, which costs a little less money, but then you no longer have the original cafe. Um, so yeah, it's, it's, uh, pretty much what you would expect from a Kairosoft game. That's about running a cafe. Uh, one kind of crazy thing is that you have to select the dishes that you're your cafe will serve each day. Um, and so every night you get to go and send your people or send one of your cooks that is developing dishes. So at first you, you're going to want to develop a lot of dishes and try out the recipes that you find to try and make better and, and more expensive dishes. However, eventually, you know, within a couple of years, you're going to want to focus on just a couple of dishes and make them really, really, really good. Um, because you can only serve between six and 12 dishes at any particular restaurant. And, uh, you end up with way more than that, um, of places that you can go. So it's, I, I'm, the cool thing about it is that you're managing multiple sites, but that's also kind of the bad thing about it because, you know, it seems like a lot of Kairosoft games, it's a lot about the micromanagement. And in this case, uh, it's difficult to micromanage. You can get up to eventually you get three different sites and micromanaging all of that gets a little bit crazy. And then strangely enough, like you have uh, like eight different, uh, different, I don't know, specs. Each food is like graded on like saltiness and like there's eight different aspects that you have to worry about, which is a little bit daunting and especially when you're then adding ingredients to it at night with your chef to research new ones and make the dish better um it takes a while to figure out which ones which ingredients do which things and you know it takes you like two months every single time that you try to to research a new one or yeah two months so um you end up with the uh, 
there's five different sites that you can build on and each site if you build there you can expand twice and then if you expand twice you have a really huge uh with like seven servers or nine servers and just you you end up with a really big restaurant and lots of people coming and you're always trying to impress a new class of customer because each class of customer allows you to run events and those events will allow you to find new foods or go to new locations or or introduce you to new classes of uh, of uh, people that will then come, which is really great. Or you can find recipes which uh, allow you to cook different things in your restaurants. But like I said, it, it almost feels like there's too much micromanage, too much to micromanage that you just get kind of lost in it. Um, I just in in terms of the you, there's also at times you can get the really famous chefs um but you have to negotiate with them and when you negotiate you usually end up using a lot of money and then paying them probably more than they're really worth but they all have funny names like is kind of typical for kairosoft games like clemen tyne and an anonymous and yeah so every single one of them is kind of funny but it's just i don't know i I wanted to like it, but this one is not one of the better Kairosoft, in my opinion. Maybe because it just feels too much like so many of the other ones they've done. And you don't have quite as much freedom because when you build a place, it's like, okay, this is a location where you can stick a table. And this is a, it tells you already automatically where you can stick those things. And it's not like you can arrange it the way you want. Um, yeah, so overall... I'm going to give this a three out of five and say that they're it, it's hard because if it wasn't a Kairosoft game, I'd probably give it a four out of five, but they've just, they've set the bar so high that I just feel like you're better off going to some of some of their other games rather than this one. Um, if that's fair. So, uh, I don't think that you've bought this one, Lloyd. I no. think that you can go ahead and skip on this one. Oh, okay, cool. Good to know. You save me $4. Save exactly. So wait for one of their next ones that is better. Cool. Awesome. So, what did you give it again? Sorry, three out a of five. three out of five. Yeah, cool. and it's it's three ninety nine on the App Store. It's it's their newest one, but uh, <clears throat> yeah, just I, I don't think I can recommend it. So, cool. Good to know. All right, moving on. My last review of this episode. We're going a little long here, but that's cool. Uh, we didn't get to do so many episodes or so many reviews in the last episode. Uh, so this one, I'm going to be reviewing a game called Pitfall uh, for ninety nine cents, and we talked about this one last week and how it's a uh, it's kind of just a copy of Temple Run. And yeah, that's essentially what it is. But it was getting such high reviews. Uh, and it was at the top of the sales chart. And I was like, okay, I, I, gotta, I gotta check this out to see what it's all about. So Pitfall is basically Temple Run. Uh, you are... You're, you're Pitfall Harry, uh, or whatever his name is. And you're basically running. And it's a constant running game. Where this one's different uh, from Temple Run. So Temple Run, you're always running forward. It's always 3D, and you're swiping to turn, and you're tilting to go left and right. Uh, Pitfall starts off with you just running side to side on one plane. There's no tilting uh, left or right to to move in and out of the screen. Um, so immediately, it starts out differently. Uh, and it has a really cool kind of retro, super saturated, bright colors look to it as well, which I really dug. Um, so immediately, it was like, oh, this is different than Temple Run. So uh, you're doing things on the screen where if you swipe down you slide you swipe up you jump um, when you're in the the levels that you're running forward you can tilt to go left and right and swipe up and swipe down and stuff like that um, this one's different where uh, every once in a while you'll get an enemy on the screen so it'll be a snake or a scorpion and you actually have to attach uh, tap the screen to use your whip to uh, to kill it so anyway that is so that's basically it it's basically temple run but with um, different environments to run through and different ways that the screen moves so um, you start off running through, uh, you're basically running from the angry volcano gods. Um, so the volcano's erupting and you're trying to get away from it. Um, and uh, you'll, you'll be running through basically just rocks and, and gaps and things that you have to jump over. Uh, but then as you get further in, in the level, you, you'll, or in the world, you'll start running through cities. And then after you pass like the 4,000 meter mark, you'll start running through caves. Um, so they're really good at, at, at kind of keeping it fresh and adding new scenery and, and and throwing different level sets at you so it, it looks different even though you're kind of doing the same thing um 
this game has a full in-app purchase uh, setup as well. It's a dollar to buy, um, but there's a premium currency called, um, I, I guess they're diamonds, and you get them by leveling up, um, but things are really expensive, um, so you'll, you, if you want to buy the stuff really fast, you have to buy it with, with real money. Uh, you also collect silver bars. Um, if you played the original Pitfall on Atari 2600, you'll recognize that because you, you're picking up silver bars and other things. And silver bars can then be used to buy things instead of using the premium currency. But, for example, there's things that are called the Macaw Tokens. Um, I'll talk about those in a second. You can get 10 of them for 10, um, 10 jewels, 10 diamonds, whatever they're called. Or you can buy 10 of them for 6,000 gold bars. And you'll probably be playing through the game 50 times before you get um, 6,000 gold bars, unless you're really, really good. So it's really expensive, and it's not very... It's not very effective to do it that way um, because you, you're going to be playing forever to get them um, where you could just spend a couple dollars and do it. And there lies the dig. Um, you're paying 99 cents for this game, but it's it's almost impossible for you to get anywhere in the game without spending some real money. Um, so I, I don't really like that. Um, but anyway, um, I, I said there's macaw tokens in the game. And what happens is once you get past certain points, so if you pass 2,000 meters or 4,000 meters or 6,000 meters, every 2,000 after that, you can use gems um, to unlock a checkpoint. So I'm looking right here. How much is it? Uh, well, I already got that one. Let's see. Oh, I haven't unlocked 8,000 yet. So I haven't gotten very far because I suck at these types of games. Um, but I've already unlocked all of them um, up to 6,000. So I can't remember what it was. But you're using gems, and, and they're fairly expensive. Um, and then once you do it, you can actually use your Macaw token. And it will actually take you right to whatever checkpoint you choose. So if you want to play a harder part of the world, um, you can use the Macaw token at the 6,000 meter mark. And then you'll start there. And then you'll you'll basically start and, and continue on from there. Um, there's also other power ups like um, you can make yourself go faster with the haste tonic, or you can have anti venom tonic. So if you get bitten twice, you die. If you use one of these tonics, you don't. Um, there's life tonic. Obviously, um, there's things called jaguar tokens, and what those are is every once in a while you'll, there'll be a, a flashing thing on the screen that you jump into, and you basically start riding a jaguar, and it runs for a certain number of seconds throughout the world. Um, and then if you spend more money on jaguar tokens you'll go um you'll go faster you'll go further um there's life tonics which give you more hit points haste tonics make you run faster etc 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 of course there's outfits and other things like that but anyway the, the game is essentially uh, it's different than temple run but it's essentially temple run so if you've played temple run you'll, you'll kind of know what to expect here um I like the fact that it did change up the formula a little bit um, by having different ways. You're, you're not just running um, straight into the screen and then um, and, and jumping and sliding and, and, and turning corners. Um, I like that there was this, the side scrolling areas and, and other things like that. And, and it, the side scrolling turns into like 3D running into it. And then it goes to more side scrolling and other things like that. So I like that they tried mixing it up. But at the end of the day, it's still a Temple Run clone, and you're still expected to spend a lot of in-app purchase money. Um, Temple Run was great because it was free. Uh, initially, it wasn't, but it, it became freemium, where you didn't feel so bad spending a couple dollars on things in Temple Run. Um, I almost feel worse spending money in for in-app purchases on a game that I spent a dollar for, um, because it's like, well, I bought this game, you priced it at a dollar, you didn't price it at free and, and make it so it's mandatory to buy in-app purchase stuff. So, I don't know, that kind of rubs me the wrong way. And I've talked about it previously on, on the show, so I don't really need to get into it anymore. But anyway, that's Pitfall. Uh, if you want another uh, Endless Runner, if you want another Temple Run-like game, um, this is probably one of the better ones that I've played uh, other than Temple Run. It has a unique look. It has some unique features. And it, it's actually a lot of fun. Um, but I don't know. It, it's, it's kind of a been there, done that, played it. And with such high reliance on the in-app currency, I don't know, I'm giving it a 3 out of 5. So, uh, good game if you like these ones. If you don't mind spending a few dollars here and there, maybe this is a game for you. But yeah, um, for me, I, I'm probably going to be deleting it from my device after I'm done this review. It just uh, it doesn't have the lasting appeal that Temple Run had for, for the longest time. Um, I don't know if I'll be playing it too much more. So, uh, it gets a 3 out of 5. It, it does some really interesting things, but um, I, I've kind of played those games, so I want to... I want to move on to kind of the next thing now. So uh, there you go. Pitfall, 99 cents on the App Store. Check it out. Three out of five. All right, Jared. 
Do you have anything else to add or are we done here? No, that was a pretty good show. Why don't you tell us your life story, Jared? We'll spend a few minutes talking about the real Jared. Who is this Jared guy? I got nothing. No? All right. All right, guys, we, <laughs> we want to hear from you. Let us know what you think of the show. Uh, send us an email, vgpodcast at gmail.com. You can always go to vgpodcast.com and click contact us at the top of the page and send us an email. Uh, you can send us a voicemail at area code 505 VG Podcast. Call it on your phone, which is really awesome, and leave us a voicemail. Um, Thank you to everybody that's been downloading and subscribing the show. Um, if everybody that's listening to the show right now can go and tell two friends that are looking for awesome apps on their iPhone, tell them where to get the show, show them how to subscribe to podcasts, uh, you, you'll be brightening their day and making it, uh, making us have some more downloads, which will um, make us more eager to add new and fancy and amazing things to the show. So if you could do that as a little bit of homework, that would be really awesome as well. All right, Jared, thanks for joining me yet again, man. Hey, it was my pleasure. We'll and talk to you next week. Yeah, we'll talk to you next week, and we will talk to you guys next week on uh, VGPodcast.com. Just a reminder, we do do the bonus stage live at 10 p.m. every Friday night, so if you're looking for another show that's a little bit different than this one, you might want to check out uh, the bonus stage. Um, just go to VGPodcast.com slash live at 10 p.m. Central tomorrow night. Uh, well, depending on when you listen to this, it's Friday, uh, Friday night, and uh, you can jump in and, and watch us as we record that show. Thanks, everybody that joined us uh, live today, jumping in in the chat room or just watching the live stream. Uh, we do that. We, we do love putting up live shows, and we love doing it for you guys. Uh, if you want to hear hear more about when we're doing live shows, you can sign up to the newsletter. Um, just do that at vgpodcast.com, and we'll let you know when uh, new shows are coming out and when we're planning live shows as well. So anyway, that's enough of us. Uh, take care, guys, and we'll talk to you next week. Later. Thank you.